I'm Jenny Raymond and I'm here today at Festival of Quilts and I'm the world's only twiddler, fiddler, nipper, tucker, manipulator and maneuver material and I demonstrate various ways of playing with fabric. Today I'm going to show you how to do the fancy fandango. This is one of my own inventions and you actually will find it in glorious Technicolor on the Texture and Sudoku DVD which has a whole load more ideas. But a quick way to make a fandango is by taking two squares and I've got two eight inch squares but you're saying What's a fandango? Let me tell you. A fandango is basically an applique. It's formed by taking two squares and folding them in a certain way. You can use this applique anywhere you like. You could put it on a quilt to hide a junction that wasn't particularly good. You could wear it on your hair, on your hat, on your chest with a tassel, and yes, I have been known to do so. It even makes into a little box. And if you so desired, you could make it into a Christmas decoration. Right, now you're itching to know exactly how we do it. You're going to take your two 8-inch squares and they need to be pressed in half and in half again in the other direction. So you get a crisscross across the middle. Thread your machine up with thread that vaguely matches the fabric. Don't worry about the stitching, it's not going to show. Move number one, take your piece of fabric. Now I've got some calico. If you have a fabric with a right or wrong side, the right side will be underneath. Fold the sides to the middle, okay? Sides to middle. Stick it underneath the sewing machine. Having got the sides folded to the middle, all you are going to do is a couple of straight stitches straight across the middle. I like to put it under, drop my needle down, lower press of foot, and sew straight across the middle. Just a few stitches, not too many. When you've gone across the middle, just go back a bit, stop in the center, raise the press of foot, swing the thing round, lift up the two corners nearest to you, pull them out sideways and bring the third side to touch the middle. It makes a boat shape or a house roof depending on which way up you're looking at it. So from the centre onto one side, stop, swing it round and you'll never guess what you're going to do on the other side. Open the side up, bring it to touch the middle, shut it, stop it down, so across the middle, reverse, back to centre. When you've done that, raise the press of foot, pull the thing out slightly towards you. Here is a little ear. Hello, little ear. You don't have to say that. Lift the ear up, open it out, and squish it down. It forms a square shape. Now, if it doesn't have a nice pointy corner, before you flatten it, give it a scratch. Scratch it with your fingernail. Lift it up, open it down. And you're going to sew across the corner, just so a little way. Scratch the next one, lift the ear, open it up, squash it down. I can see you're beginning to realize exactly what's going to happen. Round we go, scratch it again, lift it up, open it out, squash it down. Almost getting boring now, isn't it? This is the third stage of the fancy fandango. And finally, the last one, lift the ear, open it up, squash it down. Right, we have one more stage to go. And this is, on the corners here, we have two creases, two folds. You're going to bring the fold from one side to lie flush with his friend, the fold on the other side, fold to fold. Swing the machine round, and all you are going to do is sew across the end. Keep the stitching as close to the center as you can do. Fold to fold, and work your way round. Now, don't be fussy. Don't be too picky about this. It really doesn't matter too much. The fancy fandango is a forgiving thing. If you want to know where it came from, trying to make an origami folded paper frog. Failed on the frog, came up with a fandango. So you could call this a fancy fandango or a failed frog if you wanted to. Now, you will have forgotten that I said in the beginning, you need two squares. And you want to do exactly the same thing to the second square. So I'll leave that there. Find my lesson prep. Here's ones I did earlier. We have two squares the same. Now, to complete the fandango, you leave one square as it is, you turn t'other one over, you bring the four corners to touch in the very center. When you brought the four corners to touch in the very center, simply catch them down with a couple of hand stitches. Much the best to do it by hand. Then all you simply do is lay it onto its background one, like that. I like to have it on the diagonal. I catch it down on the four corners, maybe not in the middle, but if you wanted to, you could always add a bead in the very center. And there's no reason why you can't make lots of these. There's no reason why you can't make three sections. And why not have one section on top of another one? You could do it any size you like. So there you are. 
That is Jenny Raymond and her fancy Fandango from the Festival of Quilts. <laughs> <laughs>